They call this place the Venice of Turkey. Welcome to Eskisher here! So this is Eskisher here, which is in between Istanbul and Ankara. And it's quite easy to get to either of those cities on the high-speed train. There are two types of high-speed train running on these lines, and they travel at 250 kilometers an hour. There's about three quarters of a million people that live here in the city, but it's a very cosmopolitan city and very modern looking. So let's take a quick look around the centre of this pretty city. One thing that stands out here are the lovely bridges. And there are gold statues and flowers everywhere. and some of the statues are quite comical. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. My husband is exactly the same. I beg your pardon. <laughs> there are lots of statues in this beautiful city, but this has to be the biggest one. This statue is a representation of Ataturk's vision and the mayor here Yilmaz Bukershen in this city we think has achieved it and he started the first open university studies here. The Anadolu University is one of the biggest in the world and there, it's got 22,000 resident students uh, and the campus is huge and very pretty. Maybe it's because of that that this is such a high-tech industrial area too and it's kept really clean as well. It's one of the cleanest cities I've seen in Turkey. The river here is called the Pursuk River. Porsuk means badger, but I can't find any relevance to a badger anywhere in the city. So I'm not sure where that name comes from. One of the big attractions here, of course, are the gondolas, which reminds us all of Venice. It's only 50 lira to go on the gondola, but it's a great experience. And it's, uh, although it's only 10 minutes long, I mean, where else in Turkey can you go on a gondola? And I don't know why other places in Turkey don't do this on their rivers. There you are. Lovely. Okay. Yes, that's what you do when you're on a gondola. You take lots of photographs. Yeah. So. Just one corner toe. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Everybody's looking. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> Where did you get those words from? The gondola trip is very romantic and costs 50 lira, but for 10 lira you can go on this boat trip which lasts about half an hour. I've got to say, for 10 lira, it's a great way of seeing the city. We're here in the middle of August. And one of the reasons we came here is because the temperature is a lot cooler. It's 800 meters above sea level here, similar to Ankara. 
and so the temperature is about 10 degrees lower than the south coast and in fact at night time wearing shorts I've even been a bit chilly traveling about well they've got an amazing tramway system which takes you all around the city to go on the tramway you need to get one of these which is called an S cart now the S cart when you buy it you need you get a receipt and it's got a little number on so you must remember that that, that number is important now we tried to do it on our phones and we couldn't so we asked the, the receptionist to do it on the computer and what he does is he puts the number in off this receipt he, you have to have a Turkish telephone number to put on it as well and your HES code and then it will register the card then you can put on money at the little, little shops um, and cigarette places that you can just top it up whenever and you only need one card for two of you because you just put it on twice and go through, hopefully. So shall I try it? Here we go. <laughs> it doesn't work. It still doesn't work. We eventually used the tram a couple of times, but we found it much easier just to jump into a taxi. There's all little restaurants and coffee bars next to the river. Even the Café de Paris. In fact, there are lots of cafes down the little streets on the south side of the river, but none of them sell any alcohol. We'll work our way through them. What about, you haven't had a chocolate yet, this is just the baklava. Well, damn. I thought we were just having coffee. We were, but when I looked at this, it just looked so inviting. It's chocolate baklava, and I haven't had this for ages, but look at it, look. Hang on, it's just. Oh yeah. <laughs> People are getting used to you doing that. Nice then. It hits the spot. <laughs> and all the way down the river has been beautifully designed it's so pretty much of the beauty and modernization of this city can be attributed to one guy Yulmaz Büyük Eşen who became the mayor in 1999 and he used to be the professor at the university and became the rector of the university, Anatolian University. And he also does waxworks himself. He's an artist and he's held in very high regard. And he's actually got his own waxworks museum here. So we're at the Yulmaz Bükerşen Balmuma Heykeller Müzesi, or basically the wax museum. Most of the characters are famous Turks with a couple of exceptions. The museum is a real tribute to Yulmaz's talent. This museum is in an old part of the city called Odenpazara and it's got dozens of restored old Ottoman houses. So one of the most interesting places in Eskisha here is this area which is called Odenpazara. Odin is actually like firewood so years ago of course this is where they used to sell the firewood.
Odin Pazara, modern musici. They don't look like M's, but that's what they're supposed to be. So it's the modern museum. Don't come on a Monday because it's not open, but today it's Tuesday. There's some funny things in here. So this is a Vesta washing machine and I think it's trying to say it's cleaning the world. But what do you think? There are a few other museums around this area too. The Wood Museum with unusual carvings. And there's a glass museum. And a few people still do glass products nearby. Oh, looks like you've won an Oscar, lovey. That will look very pretty with a candle behind it. I can just see it. Yeah, it. Not forgetting the pipe makers, of course, of which there are several in this area. Lulitasha, Lulitasha, I'm a. Biarshaw. Uh, Mersham. Mersham stone. So he's a carver of this, what they call in English, Mersham stone. I'll have to look that one up. But it's quite popular around here in Eskishir here. Ah, because they can only find this stone in, in Eskishir here. That's one, why there's so many carvers around here. Thank you, Zoya. Send me some Erol. Erol. Erol Erol Güler. Erol Güler. Sen çok gülüyorsun Erol. Teşekkür ederim. His surname's Güler, which is like <laughs> Smiler. Errol explained how they changed the colour using wax and honey. Öyle mi? He's been doing this 41 years. Crikey. Bütün hayatınız o zaman. Bütün hayatınız abi, evet. 10 yaşından beri bu işin içerisinde. He started at 10 years old. Teşekkürler. Ben teşekkür ederim. And for leisure, of course, it's not just the river. There are a few parks here too. We've come to the Shalali Park, which is one of the highest points in the city. It's at the back of the Odum Pazara on a very steep hill. That's why it's got such a fantastic view. I think the only way to get up here is in a taxi and make sure the taxi drops you off at the top so you walk down. Although it's a man-made waterfall, it's a really pleasant place to be. With a small kids park in the grounds too. <laughs> Come on mate, off we go. Howdy. Cha cha. <laughs> There's a cafe right in front of the waterfall and a really nice mangal restaurant where you can cook your own meat what the Turks call kendin pish kendin ye, while you enjoy the lovely view. Although this was one of the best restaurants we'd seen in Eskisha here, unfortunately as it was our last night, we never got to enjoy a meal there. Next time maybe. The Turk Havakuvetleri, that's the Turkish Air Force, have a base just outside of the city here. You will often hear the F-16 bombers going over and sometimes you'll even see a raptor. That's the F-22 raptor, not a dinosaur. And the Anadolu University have created an open-air aviation museum close to their campus with several aircraft, rockets and even a helicopter. They are doing some restoration work in this museum, so it's been closed for a little while. Um, but when it opens again, it's just amazing to be able to come up close to these big planes. But the security guy who let me have a look around said it should reopen for the summer of 2022. And you can get there on the tramway, of course.
Strangely enough, Eskishia here has got a beach, a sandy beach, although the nearest coastal port is 110 miles away. So this is Kent Park, it's taken us about 10 minutes to get here on the tram but when you do arrive it, it's just beautiful, there's a cool breeze and there's hardly anybody here today which is unusual because it's actually Saturday but it's a very peaceful park to enjoy. And there's something very special about this park as well, aren't they? The swan. No, the beach. The beach! We've come to Kemp Park because we wanted to see the artificial beach, which is behind me. And I've paid 30 lira to get in. And while I was preparing my sunbed on the sand, the lifeguard came up to me and said, no, 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 this area is for men only. So basically, this beach here, this part, is for men only. And beyond, behind me, you have a middle section, which is a swimming pool. Um, and beyond that, past the Plage Cafe, is where it's for families only. I've collected Mick Amger and we are now heading to the family area <laughs> to see what that's all about. So let's go. So for 30 lira each, we've finally made it onto the family beach. Yeah, it, it reminds me of an old Butlin's holiday camp. Well. <laughs> like we used to have in England. I don't know why I'm here actually, because I, I hate beaches. <laughs> so I'm going back to the cafe now. It's a lovely place to come and have a swim. It's a lovely place to bring the kids and have a bit of fun, isn't it? We understood that it's nice to have the guys separate from the ladies, but we couldn't quite understand why there wasn't a cadun volume for the ladies who wanted to be on their own. But just a little drive out of town is another part which seems a lot more popular, especially with children. It's called Sazawa Park and it has the most amazing fairy tale castle which is reminiscent of Disney World. And this 50 meter high structure is not just an incredible landmark. Inside are interesting and engaging things for children and parents alike. I couldn't film inside due to YouTube's child filming policy but it really is an amazing place. And it's not the only feature in this park. There's also a fantastic galleon. It's actually a pretty good copy, or it might even be an original. I need to look that up on the internet. Sometimes you just have to be a big kid, don't you? Oh, hi there, Captain! There's <laughs> a man overboard! Why am I doing an Irish accent? I don't know. And it's a great place for some wedding photography. So although this park's got quite a few interesting things in it, it's actually a nice park to just sit and relax in as well. And it is a bit more popular than the Kent Park, as you can see. There is normally a train going around this park, but due to the COVID situation, it's been shelved. Normally when you press these taxi buttons, a taxi comes in a few minutes, but if you're outside the park, which is a bit out of town, and you do it at rush hour, you'll be waiting a long time because we've been here 45 minutes now, still haven't got a taxi. Eventually a lovely passing taxi driver stopped for us, who was a really interesting guy, telling us he was a descendant of the Crimean Tatars from Russia, and so many still live in Eskishahir, he said. 
Incidentally, taxi meters are now a standard on the mirrors on all taxis all over Turkey. There are dozens of high quality hotels and pantheons ranging from £10 to 50 and you can get a five star hotel for £40 a night here. Most of the bigger hotels are on the north of the river but we like the south side of the river. We stayed at a three star hotel which was called the Vendôme owned by a French Turkish guy and it's only £29 a night, including breakfast. It had nice rooms, good breakfast and it's got its own little Irish pub. Middle of August, we got the windows wide open, lovely cool air coming in and no mosquitoes. You can't beat going to a Lacanta, which is just on the corner from where we're staying. Kıymalı yumurta, en sevdim. It's my favourite. It's minced meat with an egg on top. Yes, it's my favourite. So how's your kıymalı yumurta? Very tasty. And when you come to these Lacantas, you've just got to have bread from the bucket of bread. That shows it's a real Lacanta. And you have to try one of the chilies, of course. This one's all right. And they've got some great stuff in this place as well. On this side of the river, the south side of the river, you'll only find alcohol in a couple of the bars which are attached to hotels. But on the other side of the river, the north side, there is one crazy street. I don't think I've ever seen as many pubs as this in an inner city in Turkey before. It's just amazing. There must be 40 pubs here. It's sort of a cross between a touristic street and a fairground. But there are some great fast food places in nearby streets. A couple of people have said about trying chi burek and we just ordered it, but we didn't expect such a huge plateful. So I'm just going to try it. Apparently it's supposed to be deep fried pastry, I think, with meat in it. Go on, give it a go, lovey. What do you think? Is there anything in it? <laughs> There is actually, and it's very tasty. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I better have one then. Mm. It reminds me of um, like a pasty. Oh yeah, what a Cornish pasty? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's lovely. I like it. Right. There's plenty of pedestrianised streets, but one of the most popular ones is the Hammam street. Neden zil çalıyor? Ha orada mı? Herkes biliyor o yeni kafe, yeni kafe oluyor değil mi? Ne güzel ya. Koku, kokudan, kokudan belli zaten. Süper. Kolay gelsin. It's a very interesting street. It's very busy, isn't it? Look at this area here. It's sort of half a park and half a street, isn't it? So many nut stores here. And dried fruits, of course. And look at the prices. And I've never seen so many sultanas and currants. 
Z Dali, I've never heard of it. Please. Look at that. What's a quarter? Cherek. 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 You're going mad, aren't you? Oh no. It's called shopping therapy. <laughs> I can't believe the prices are so cheap. The size of those. The, that's the Jebizli Sujuk, isn't it? Yes, Jebizli Sujuk. One more time, Mama. One more time, a big ring, a bit of a coy ring. How much is it? What kind of thing? It's a little bit of a coy ring. It's a little bit of a coy ring. So he says one's made from, from the Dutch. Which is yes. the um, mulberry bush, yes, yes. and the other one's made from grape. Oh, so you're having the one made from the mulberry? I'm having the one from Dut, yeah. Come mulberry, on. the mulberry. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Back there, mama, back there. We're just totaling up what I've got carried away with. Yeah, you do get a bit carried away, don't you, lovey? We need a bigger suitcase. No, you just got to eat them all. <laughs> That's all. Well, that's breakfast taken care of. Catch you all, dude. Look at that top lamp. Top lamp. Ah, ah, cut you have to take it to. You have to take it to the to the money person. Use on. Come 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 <laughs> yeah, you've got quite a lot of stuff there, aren't you, it's, Livy? It's quite heavy. That's a bloody suitcase, Paul. <laughs> there are many ancient sites outside of the city, not far away, like Midas and Yazala Canyon. But we've been so enchanted by the city centre that we haven't even been outside. But we did come to the Archaeological Museum, which has got many of the artefacts in anyway. And guess what? It's open on a Monday and it's one of the only museums here that is open on a Monday. And as with all museums in Turkey, there's always some fantastic pieces, artefacts from different archaeological sites. First time I'd seen a clay sarcophagus. There are thousands of museums in Turkey and a lot of them have very similar artifacts in, but whatever museum you go in in Turkey, you'll always find one or two pieces which are unusual. to explore. This is a beautifully restored old wholesale fruit and veg market and again saved by the mayor and now called the youth centre. And there's a popular pub inside as well. You buying another bag? Your suggestion. <laughs> The coffee shop owner, or gave us most of this information and then showed us the plaque on the wall. One thing we really like about Eskisher here is after sort of 9, 10 o'clock at night, although the cafe bars and uh, some of the restaurants close up, there's lots of young people out on the streets and and everyone seems to be happy and having a bit of fun and it's a very lively place we just love it here so we think the lovely city of Eskisha here could easily be one of turkey's best city touristic destinations yeah definitely so don't forget to like subscribe and hear the notification bell so you don't miss where we go next thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching.